Hello everyone, tonight on the program, World Bank hints of preparedness to advance additional financial support for Ghana for COVID-19 vaccine purchase after proving $430 million for government. Bank, I decide, invest in uh, vaccine production, but our IFC, private sector team, is looking at the possibility of supporting this activity. Meanwhile, application process for second tranche of COVID-19 stimulus package begins this week, but some businesses are not enthusiastic. We are waiting to hear anything from them. Uh, since we are, we are starting uh, the process today, hopefully, maybe by the close of the day, we will hear something from them. But so far, nothing has been heard. Pass postponed again, ECOWAS member states fixed 2027 for full implementation of the single currency ECHO. Due to the COVID, the shock given by COVID, the head of state had decided to suspend the implementation of the Convergence uh, uh, Pact in 2020 and 2021. We'll hear more from the president of the ECOWAS Commission and analyze reasons for the postponement. Hello everybody, this is Business Live. Thanks for joining us. My name is Daryl Kwao. Details after this break. Look at the commodity market for you. We've got our eyes on uh, Brent crude trading at $74 a barrel. We've seen how that has impacted on fuel prices locally. We continue to watch that for you. First, though, the World Bank has indicated its preparedness to advance additional financial support to Ghana for the purchase of COVID-19 vaccines. The bank last year approved some $430 million in loans for the purchase of the vaccines. Country Director Pierre Laporte tells Joy Business this will be done based on requests from government. The World Bank is very supportive of the idea. Uh, however, we will not directly, as the bank, I decide, invest in uh, vaccine production. But our IFC private sector team is looking at the possibility of supporting this activity. But from my perspective, uh, however, we will not directly, as the bank, I decide, invest in uh, vaccine production. But our IFC private sector team is looking at the possibility of supporting this activity. But from my perspective, from our perspective, we think it's a very good initiative because often, as you know, we cannot give the care because of the availability. We just saw in Indiana what happened and AstraZeneca is not available. So to the extent that Africa can manufacture its own va vaccine, this will help us deal and support our people in a more timely manner. Yeah. What measures have you put in place with respect to what you've approved, the 430, to ensure that there is value for money and these monies are used for the purpose of which it was disbursed? Okay, first and foremost, each time we approve a project, we have a procurement plan attached to that for the whole value. And uh, that plan describes each and every activity that's been costed approximately, for, which is the basis for either direct procurement or a, a public tender. So to the extent that this activity are well listed beforehand, government has to adhere to that. If it has to make changes, it has to approve by us through a restructuring. And then secondly, every activity is uh, delivered under the rules, procurement rules set up by the World Bank uh, globally. So we cannot uh, go and procure any item against the rules set up for World Bank projects. So to that extent, we are comfortable that uh, the money, the, the items will be acquired 
from a value for money perspective. And then we also have other mechanisms like regular audits. Uh, uh, we have the, the designated account for which our money goes, goes there, from there it goes to pay the suppliers. So it's a very, it's a very conventional and uh, you know, uh, widely applied, globally applied standard. Well, the application process for the second tranche of COVID-19 stimulus package for businesses by the Ghana Enterprises Agency starts this week, but some businesses affected by the pandemic appear less enthusiastic about the process, process which they say is not clear. Manuel Frimpong is executive director of the Ghana Tourism Federation. We have not heard anything from uh, anyone. Let me not mention names. Uh, there hasn't been any communication. There hasn't been any alert, nothing whatsoever. Uh, and it's unfortunate. Um, we don't know why. Uh, I don't want to believe at our last meeting with NBSSI, uh, we're made to aware that uh, they wouldn't want to deal with associations again because of the stress that they had to go through. I don't want to believe that is the situation because mm. that would be unfortunate. Uh, so we are waiting to hear anything from them. Uh, since we are, we are starting uh, the process today, hopefully, maybe by the close of the day, we will hear something from them. But so far, nothing has been heard from them. All right. I also asked him about the World Bank support for the tourism sector. That part of the clip we didn't show you. And apparently, it was a fiasco, uh, for lack of a better word. What happened? I, I don't know what really happened because, um, like we, we heard Mr. Yofi Grant uh, mention just some few moments ago mm. that the, 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 the hospitality sector is one of the areas that they are looking to invest and to also support to help us because they believe it's an area or sector that can help the country yet we keep hearing some of these rhetorics we are supporting them we will support them and no support is coming if you look at the number of association or individual businesses in the tourism and hospitality industry that were supported by government through NB, NBSSI. Right. It's, it's, right. it's, it's unfortunate. As doctor mentioned, a total of 10 employees will receive something like 3,000, some people receiving 500 cities, others 300 cities. What are you going to do with 300 cities if you're a tall operator or a tall guy? And that's so, just uh, ridiculous. Yeah. Well, away from uh, COVID-19 stimulus package, member states of the Economic Committee of West African States, ECOWAS, have fixed 2027 for full implementation of the single currency ECHO. Now, they have been aired to work together uh, towards meeting the 11 convergence criteria, including an end-of-year single inflation and fiscal deficit of not more than 4% of gross domestic product for qualification. So far, only six out of the 16 member states have rectified the agreement Addressing a news conference, the climax, the ordinary uh, summit of ECOWAS here in Accra, President of the Commission, Jean-Claude Cassibru, said the revised date for implementation of the ECHO is as a result of the impact of COVID-19 on the economies of member states. So there was a, a long uh, discussion on the result of those reflections that were discussed at the level of the ministerial uh, committee. And the Council of Ministers also discussed that. And uh, finally, I think what is really, uh, I think, very impressive is that on a very difficult matter, I think President Akufuado really was uh, uh, very, very success successful in having uh, 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 all the member countries on board to have a, a new commission that will be put in uh, March 22 to really, uh, 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 with, with seven commissioners from the current 15 commissioners. That's an extremely uh, big achievement. I really want to uh, really thank uh, really the president, uh, the, the chair of authority, President Akufu Addo, because it was not really at the beginning something easy to achieve. But today, all 15 member countries agreed to have the reform of the ECOWAS institution and to bring the number of commissioners from 15 to, 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 to seven commissioners. And I think that was 
if there is one thing that we can take out of this summit is this uh, achievement and important decision that was made by, by, by the head of state and government. We also had, in terms of the single currency, a new roadmap and a new convergence pact, and the convergence pact that will cover the period 22, 26, and uh, the, the 27 being the launching of the, of the ECO. So that's also a very big uh, uh, decision because you recall, due to the COVID, the shock given by COVID, the head of state had decided to suspend the implementation of the convergence uh, uh, pact in 2020 and 2021. So now, they also, and they also decided that uh, the ministerial committee should look at a new roadmap, a new convergence pact, to take into account the lesson that have uh, been taken in, uh, that, we, that we could take from the previous pact. So I think this is now something that has been done. The ministerial committee has presented the result, the new roadmap, and the new convergence pact that was adopted by the head of state and government. There are uh, some other issues that need to be solved, but I think this is a key achievement for the single currency. So I will stop here. <coughs> well, so let's discuss this further. Joining me via Zoom is Dr. Benjamin Amwa, who is Executive Director of the Center for Economics, Finance and Inequality Studies. Uh, great to uh, have you join us uh, tonight. So my first reaction to this story was, I'm not surprised. We keep postponing the implementation date. What was yours? Yeah, good evening. It is again not surprising, like you rightly said, because the convenience criteria, both primary and secondary countries in West Africa have struggled to meet. It's only a few of them that have been successful in coming closer to meeting all the stated criteria that has to be met. So it is not surprising, especially with COVID also coming in, then again, it poses some level of challenge for these countries who before COVID were struggling mm. and post COVID are also having some challenge. So I think the right thing to do for now, there's more to it than just the COVID. There's more to it than just the COVID in terms of the five yeah. more years added to the period for West Africa to have a single currency. And so we had the president of the ECOWAS Commission cite uh, in his speech the impact of COVID-19 on the economies of the various uh, member states. You raised that point as well. Just wondering, though, how significantly do you think that uh, COVID caused the delay in the implementation of the ECO? Yeah, COVID, it was projected by IMF that COVID will have about 3.2% contraction effect on the economies of sub-Saharan Africa, including mm. West Africa. Again, if you look at what we primarily export, they are basically the commodities. And with COVID, the commodities market have seen some price declines. So clearly, the economies of West Africa have been negatively impacted by COVID. Again, in addition to COVID, you realize that the French block in West Africa last year indicated that they wanted to replace the CFA franc with ECO mm -hmm. without buying into the agreement of the West African group. So right from West uh, last year, there has been this friction between the English block in the ECO discussion and the French block. The English block is being led by Nigeria. And for Nigeria, the view is that we need to make sure that the convergence criteria are met. But for the French bloc, they are in a hurry. They are, they are, they are, their behavior is more of in a hurry to replace the French franc with the echo. Mm -hmm. So they are talking about replacing the French franc with echo, whilst the English bloc is talking about meeting the criteria and then making sure that it becomes a currency that all West African countries can work with. So this, in addition to COVID, is what has made it a bit difficult for West African countries to adopt the ECHO now. But I believe that in the years to come, with the additional five years, the countries will have enough time to resolve this French-English 
person and then work on the macroeconomic convenience criteria, and it will be a perfect time for West Africa to have the currency. So, uh, so far, we are told that only six out of the 16 countries have met the criteria. Uh, we are talking about uh, single-digit inflation and a fiscal target of uh, 4% of uh, gross domestic product. And we are now looking at post-COVID-19 economic recovery. Is six years from now a realistic target where we'd see the member states meet the criteria? Uh, if, if you look at what has happened in the past, 2003, 10, 20, and West African countries have struggled, member countries have struggled to meet it, then you say, okay, fine, what would the four years do or five years do for them to, to be able to meet the criteria? But then again, I believe strongly, and we believe strongly that it is possible for these countries to be able to meet the criteria. What they need to do is to look at how best they can reduce spending, because that is what triggers budget deficit for most of these countries. And once the budget deficit is out of gear, inflation, central bank coming in to finance your budget will definitely come in. So one, make sure you reduce your spending, and then two, widen your tax net so that you will be able to gradually meet the criteria. And so for the next four years, if these countries can do this for the next four, five years to come, then they should be in a good position to meet the primary one and then have a single currency. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they should be able to do so. Otherwise, I guess you're going to keep postponing the implementation of the ECHO. And so I'm asking, is the common currency for West Africa still necessary um, only last week, there was indication from the after uh, secretariat that uh, they were planning on a common currency for the trade bloc. I'm talking about Africa as a whole. Shouldn't that be the focus now? Do we still need the a single currency for West Africa? It is good to hope for the best. It is good to hope that these countries will work on ECHO because even with the after currency, there will still be some convergence criteria that ought to be met. So the ECO presents the platform for these countries in West Africa to put their house in order, so to say, so that they can easily transition into the African currency mm. that will be pushed by AU through after. So looking at AU, you are talking about that 2063. I think I said think that we should work on the echo, get the criteria right, and then West Africa will have an easy route into the after currency. So it's a good thing we still focus on echo. Okay, I guess we have to wait till 2027 to see um, how this um, all plays out. I'm grateful for your time. Uh, Dr. Benjamin Amar, who is Executive Director of Surface. Uh, speaking to us about the postponement of the uh, co implementation. You're watching Business Live. We're taking a short break. We'll have some more news after that. On Money Lab today, we want to have discussion on the funding options that are available for micro, small, and medium scale enterprises. For today, we want to talk about angel investors. These are normally high net worth individuals that have money to inject in a business in a form of equity capital. What this means is that they are willing to give you money, but in return, you give them a part of your company. This investment can be in a form of a one-time injection, or we could have several injection but the whole point is to be able to get you off your feet as a startup. One key advantage of getting an angel investor is that they normally don't have very cumbersome due diligence processes. Also, they are normally found within your circle of family or friends and relatives. Also, there are investment banks that have access to these angel investors and they can connect you to them. So the next time you are looking for funding for your startup, talk to an investment bank that will lead you to an angel investor.
interesting story there from China about uh, the liquor costing $1.4 million during an auction. Well, let's settle back home because chairman of Magdan Group, Daniel McCauley, has hinted of plans to establish a research center for African trade at the University for Professional Studies Law School. The center, subject to approval, will, among other things, serve as an institute to lead a charge on trade research, capacity building, and coordination of initiatives under the continental free trade area. Dr. McCauley made the disclosure during a lecture in his honor on the topic thereafter in the new age of African enterprise. Here's a report put together by Ibn Sabute. The General Secretary of the African Continental Free Trade Secretariat, Wamkele Mene, who was the guest speaker, believed a common payment system will help reduce the use of individual countries' currency, which is costing African countries about $5 billion annually. He also called for time to allow for negotiations to be completed whilst trading is ongoing. Goods are, are required to be flowing between countries. As you would have seen in January, Ghana sent a consignment to South Africa. Egypt is ready. Kenya is ready. Of course, there are other countries. Uh, it's taking time for them to put in place the necessary customs procedures, but uh, it is all to be expected because trade agreements, you don't see returns overnight, uh, you don't see results overnight. So I think we should be patient um, and uh, wait for the system to conclude uh, negotiations. Daniel McCauley used the opportunity to announce a proposal to establish an African Center of Trade Research at the Law Faculty of the University of Professional Studies. He is confident that such a research center will promote the importance of regional trade on the continent. In the next couple of uh, months, actually, I mean, Africa is, is a green market and uh, we need to have a research center into African business. As you heard, you rightly heard, Singapore alone is contributing to the global economy 6%. Africa, 54 countries or 52 countries who have signed the treaty, are only contributed are contributing 2% into the global economy. It's a shame. And I can tell you, Singapore is just a small, small place. Why can't we also um, look at what is happening around the world and see how we can contribute towards trade? So this, this is why the research center is very Uh, business live tonight thanks for watching everyone there's more news on our website myjoyonline.com or slash business you can visit the website for more business news updates my name is Daryl Kwao thanks for watching our program we're back same time tomorrow